Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 25th of August 2019 and we're providing our gold and silver weekly update for the week ending the 23rd of August. We shall also be commenting on the rise of gold and silver prices on Friday and the fall of the Dow, the fallout from the Jackson Hole Symposium and what is happening at the G7 in France this weekend. Gold rose $14 last week from $1,513 to $1,527 having hit a high of 1529 and a low of 14.92 in sterling terms gold finished the week at 1243 pounds that's down 3 pounds and in euros it closed at 1369 euros that's up 6 euros silver rose 29 cents from $17.11 to $17.40 having hit a high of 17.48 and a low of 16.85. In sterling terms, it closed at 14 pounds and 16 pence. That's up 8 pence. And in euros, it closed at 15.61 euros. That's up 0 0.19 euros. The gold to silver ratio fell slightly from 88.4 to 1 to 87.8 to 1. The Dow Jones closed on Friday 25,628, down 623 points on the day and down 258 points on the week. And the Nasdaq closed at 7,751, down 239 points on the day and down 144 points on the week. And the S&P 500 closed at 2,847, down 75 points on the day and down 41 points on the week. Brent crude rose 70 cents from $58.64 to $59.34. And US light crude fell 70 cents from $54.87 to $54.17. The dollar index stands at 97.64. That's down 0 0.5 on the week. Well, last week we stated to expect a little weakening in the gold price at opening but some volatility during the week while the FOMC minutes were announced on Wednesday and Jerome Powell spoke at the Jackson Hole Symposium on Friday. Well, the gold price did fall and attempted a rally on Wednesday, fell back again, and then we saw a significant move on Friday, jumping from $1,494 and closing at $1,527. So what actually happened on Friday to cause such a move in the price of gold and a fall of over 600 points in the Dow. One word, pandemonium. China decided to impose tariffs on US goods ranging from 5 to 10 percent on over 5,000 items, some 75 billion dollars in value, with effect from the 1st of September, plus a revival of 25 percent tariffs on US car imports. This incurred a reaction from the president stating, quote, Our great American companies are hereby ordered to immediately start looking for an alternative to China, including bringing your companies home and making your products in the USA. I will be responding to China's tariffs this afternoon." Unquote. That afternoon, Trump said, the US will raise tariffs from 25% to 30% on $250 billion worth of goods that are already being taxed starting the 1st of October. He also threatened to further increase promised tariffs on the remaining 300 billion in Chinese imports from 10 to 15 percent. Those tariffs are set to begin taking effect from the 1st of September, though most goods will be duty-free until the 15th of December, a move Trump made to avoid putting a damper on holiday retail sales. This created turmoil in markets. 
added to that, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, though, in our view, gave a rather accommodative speech at the Jackson Hole Symposium, seemed to have angered the President with the comments, quote, There are no recent precedents to guide any policy response to the current situation, and monetary policy cannot provide a settled rulebook for international trade, unquote. Now, basically, he was making the case that trade tensions were hitting the global economy and the Fed didn't have a rule book to deal with the fallout. This resulted in an aggressive tweet from the President, which stated, quote, As usual, the Fed did nothing. It is incredible that they can speak without knowing or asking what I am doing, which will be announced shortly. We have a very strong dollar and a very weak Fed. I will work brilliantly with both and the US will do great. My only question is, who is our bigger enemy? Jay Powell or Chairman Chi? This undermining of the Fed chair, whom in our view is actually, in coded language, giving the president what he wanted, is unprecedented, and the markets responded accordingly. An analysis of the stock market after Jerome's speech showed that although markets had fallen after China's announcement, they began to rise as the markets welcome lower interest rates, and this is what they felt Powell was promising indirectly. Then came the President's tweets and announcements which placed stocks into a tailspin again and the consequent rise in gold and silver prices. From a technical point of view, gold broke through the 10-day moving average resistance level, which is now seen as short-term support, just below $1,510, and resistance at August highs of 1535. Some analysts are predicting that if this breaks, then there could be a direct route to 1615, the highs last seen back in March 2013, though technically there are some resistant points en route, not forgetting the psychological resistance level of 1600, which some ironically could see as a challenge worth pushing towards. So, both short-term momentum and medium-term momentum have turned positive and gold has closed at a six-year high. Silver, to a large degree, followed a similar pattern to gold, having dipped initially on Monday and early Tuesday, then strongly recovering on Friday. In fact, silver rose on Friday from just below $17 to as high as $17.48 when the turmoil over China and Powell began. Technically, $17.50 offers resistance and $17 support. The uptrend is likely to continue up to $18 short term, but should the silver price fall below $16.50, then we may indeed see a fall back into the latter $15 area, though we estimate that is unlikely short term. This week, we have a range of economic figures being reported. On Monday, we have durable goods orders for July. Tuesday, consumer confidence index for August. Thursday, GDP revision for quarter two, expected at 1.8%. And advanced trading goods and pending home sales for July. And then on Friday, personal income, consumer spending, and core inflation for August to be reported and the Consumer Sentiment Index for August as well. So, Thursday and particularly Friday are important days. However, little is more important than what the President is going to do re-China and any agreements he makes at this weekend's G7 meeting. Yes, world leaders have gathered in France for the G7 summit in the French coastal town of Biarritz and is hosted by French President Emmanuel Macron. The three-day summit is taking place against the backdrop of an escalating trade war between the US and China, Britain's impending exit from the European Union, growing tensions between the US and Iran over Tehran's nuclear program, 
and global concern over fires ravaging the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. Before the president departed for Biarritz, he already set the scene by lashing out at France for what he said were unfair taxes on US tech companies like Google and Amazon, and threatened to tax French wine, quote, like they've never seen before, end quote. This will be an opportunity for the leaders of the seven most powerful countries to discuss and hopefully agree a range of policies and as far as the UK is concerned, a trade agreement with the US, where initial signs are positive. Trump has backed away also from his latest threat in the trade war with China. Well, at least it appeared that way. Now, of course, what everyone is wondering is what is likely to happen when markets open on Monday morning. Well, today it did appear that President Trump was backing off from his threat to escalate his trade war with China, admitting to, quote, second thoughts, unquote. And in comments to reporters ahead of a breakfast with Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, the President said that he had, quote, no plans right now, unquote, to use the International Emergency Economic Powers Act of 1977 to force businesses to leave China as punishment for the country's trade practices. Though he did add, quote, well, I have the right to if I want. I could declare a national emergency, unquote. Which was then further softened by the words, quote, Actually, we're getting along very well with China right now. We're talking. I think they want to make a deal, much more than I do, unquote. However, we are mindful that there are those within the White House who see this conflict with China as both a politically good move as well as an expeditious one. Also, Senator and Chair of the Senate Committee on the Judiciary, Lindsey Graham, has given the President full support on his China tariffs, pointing out that short-term pain was a price well worth paying. China does not, however, appear to be caving in either. The new round of tariffs they have imposed specifically targets cars and agricultural products, which hurt people who live in red states, directly targeting Republican Trump supporters, as it is becoming clear from China that they can last out this president, who is declining in the opinion polls. Their view is that if the economy fails, Trump will lose the 2020 presidential election and be replaced by a softer Democrat president who may be more accommodating. For unlike the United States, President Xi is appointed for life and so does not have to worry about a disgruntled electorate. And with 6% GDP, won't worry too much if it's affected by 2 or 3% for 12 months, especially when the US GDP growth has already been downgraded to 2.1%. Now, to add to Trump's woes, North Korea fired off two more short-range missiles yesterday. Also today, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif visited the G7 to meet with the French Foreign Minister, quote, to continue talks surrounding recent dialogue, unquote, and ruled out any meetings or negotiations with American officials. And in the last couple of hours, it was announced that former Republican Congressman Joe Walsh will stand in a primary against Donald Trump in the 2020 presidential elections, becoming a second Republican to bid a political war against him. The other being former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld. We must also not forget that former Director of Communications Anthony Scaramucci is also working with other Republicans to remove the president and has indicated that many millions of dollars will be spent against him in swing states. So what does this mean for the US dollar and gold and silver? Well, the next few days will undoubtedly be quite volatile. And unless the president softens his stance on China, and we are not convinced now that he will, we can expect to see the Dow deteriorate further 
and gold and silver prices improve. The dollar will decline a little too, but frankly, is still one of the best currencies amongst a bad bunch. Exciting times ahead, and we predict that $1,600 gold and $18 silver within the next three to four weeks is not an unreasonable expectation. Finally, we now have over 100 members who have joined our Discord channel. And tomorrow, being Monday the 26th of August, at 11pm British Standard Time, which is 6pm Eastern Time, we shall have a draw on Discord via the tip bot where one lucky member who is online at that time will receive the equivalent in US dollar terms, the spot price of an ounce of silver. You must, however, be online when that draw takes place to have a chance of winning. So it will be 11 p.m. British Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And obviously, whatever time that equates to in your jurisdiction. So if you haven't joined us yet, you have a small window of 24 hours to do so. We also have this past week offered a 50% discount on the first month's membership of our Bronze and Silver Inner Sanctum membership. And again, we have placed details of this in the description box below. This offer ends next Saturday. So all that remains is to wish you an enjoyable weekend, or at least what's left of it, and in the UK, an enjoyable bank holiday Monday, and as always, a most prosperous week ahead. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also, kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.